Good evening, gentlemen. 14 and 0, 1 minute, 30 odd seconds. New Commonwealth Heavyweight Champion. Far away with your questions. Hey, was that uh, more straightforward than you expected? Um, yeah. Gary's a big guy, and he's tough on better for sure. And um, he fought probably the same level of opposition, he's 21 and 0. And uh, for sure, he came out straight away with a solid jab, and I think. I could see in his eyes, I think he thought, I've got nothing to lose here, but well, he's going to be dangerous. So, um, but I managed to catch him with like a flush shot, luckily, early on, and put him away. So it's just, I think it's just complimenting all the training. That we, you know that, so we've had a great training camp. I think it's just we had a good training camp and it paid off in the ring for this. Do you like long fights after so much training, do you like? You can't, you can never predict it. You can never predict around can you? Um, as I said, I, I thought I would have loved to, to go like four rounds or something like that. Because I definitely always want to like get my opponents out of there in good fashion and knock them out. But I thought maybe four rounds. But to do it in one, I'm not complaining, but it would have been good to win a few more. And it's, it's, it's good for the people that come out to watch as well. Do you think Dillian will last long? I don't know, that's what I'm saying. I can't predict. And if you watch Dillian's fight over, win over Minto. What I normally do, because unfortunately I've got, as soon as we come in, it's kind of like just chill, locked down in a little isolated room. So uh, tomorrow when I chill out at home, and I, um, I normally watch the fight back, so I get to see it tomorrow. Can you explain what happened this year after the weigh-in? Um, I think like, we're just in the same area, and I think with all the hype, you think you're just maybe, maybe a bit nervous when I come around or something like that. And um, it seems to just build up a lot of tension, and uh, you just like, like blurts out your steam to everyone, and that's what, that's what we're thinking. No, no, no big deal. Does it bother you some of the things you say in terms of Um, nah, because I get to fight him, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You expecting it to get worse? Yeah, 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 of course. Of course. But bring it on. You'll probably hear a bit more from me. I said, the reason why I don't say much is because I can't overlook Gary Cornish, could I? My fight with Gary was the most important thing. And if you ask me about Gary, I could answer it. Now, if you ask me about Dylan, because I'm fighting Dylan, you'll probably hear a lot more from me. Eddie, the potential rivalry between these two, where does it, it sit amongst the, the great rivalries we've had? Potentially, because the, obviously the build-up hasn't actually properly started yet. Yeah, it's, um, it's not pleasant. I don't think, you know, you've seen some petty stuff. And I think we've got to be a little bit careful because, you know, we, we've got to act in the best interest of the sport, but it's, it's not nice. And I think, I mean, you'll be all right. It's the kind of shit you live for. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Let him go. Uh, but, 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 but these boys might think a little bit oh, differently, you know. But no, it's, it's what's going to sell the fight. There's history, there's bad blood, there's rivalry. There's, you know. And you might not have seen the fight, but you did it, you did it. You did it, 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 you did I thought Dylan did okay. I think there's a lot of pressure on him as well because he's not really been in that, that situation before. You know, he walked out in front of, what, 14,000 and he hasn't boxed in that kind of arena before. And everybody's talking about the Anthony Joshua fight. So he hasn't had the experience in his career to deal with what's happening right now. And I think that was one of the problems that he had. I think he was a little bit keen to impress. Um, but, you know, he, he can punch hard. He, 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 hit, he hurt him badly with a knockdown. And the final knockdown, you know, most people thought it wasn't much of a shot, but it was a big right hand and left hook to the top of the head. And Minto, if Minto wanted to quit, he could have done it in the second round, easy. But um, he's dangerous, Dylan's dangerous, but I'd, you know, I wouldn't like to be getting in the ring with his men. Honey, is there any sense of regret at all that you... I know you're obviously doing so well in these fights to be blowing people away so quickly, but that you're not actually getting the learning experiences that you could be by going sort of three, four, five rounds, taking a big shot. Well, I never want to take a big shot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, but we're all kind of intrigued in that sense, just to see how you kind of react to it, because we still haven't seen that. Well, you I'm might never see it. I might just start taking four week, three week training camps. Do you know what I mean? My coach, like, they, they keep me on lockdown, and uh, I've got good people around me that keep my head in the game. And um, that's why you can go out there and perform, and like experiences like this, fighting in front of so many people, I feel like with me, the more, the more time I have in the gym and the more time I have in boxing, the more relaxed and better I get. So, um, as I said, like, I think moving forward, that the less I get hit, the better. And the more I be hitting my opponent, the more I can move forward into tougher fights. Because if I get smashed up by these guys now, 
I don't think we'll be talking about the next step. We'll be worrying, thinking, "Koi is not the real deal." So I have to do this to these guys in order to step up to the likes of the world level. Do you have to do anything now to sort of deflate those even building yourself up so much? Yeah, seconds? I don't know why I took off my gloves because I was thinking, <laughs> "What am I doing?" Because um, I normally go back and do pads. Um, but it's all good. It's good to rest the body. You don't want to get injured. But um, I enjoy training for sure. So I'll, I'll catch up with my coach, and then we'll find out what's next and what I've got to do to to continue my training and just maintain. You will be out again before December? We have to three months. It's a long fight. Uh, with me, I'm easy. It's what my coach is expect. So if they say you're going to fight before December, I'll be ready for sure. And if not, I'll be in the gym ready for December. So whatever's kind of best, you know, I'll be, my job, I'll be ready for sure. I'll be physically ready. Any scope added for, for that? My, my gut feeling is probably no, but we'll speak to, the, again, the coaches will decide they could box on the Kell Brook card, but it's a big fight, the Dylan White fight, and you know you don't want to go in and, and overcook it. I mean, it's only, uh, three months sounds like a long time, but time he has a couple of weeks off, he'll be one in a 10-week camp for that fight anyway. So he's just, I, I know tonight was a minute, and but I've seen how hard he's trained for this one. And we're approaching now, I mean, he never have another fight under 12 rounds in supposed duration but every fight will be a championship fight now so I don't think you're going to see him boxing every six seven weeks and uh, you know, my gut feeling is move move on to the December 12th but again the, the coaches will decide. Apart from that fight though have you got anything else penciled in for the 12th? Um, a big big card a big card to close it. Plenty. You'll probably get it out of me in a week. Dave Ryan and that they do number three, I think. Four. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're good, they have a good strategy too. It's good. AJ's obviously WC number two. Mm. I mean, there is a scenario with, say, uh, Pavokin, uh, rather not wanting to face mm. Pavokin in Russia. If you ended up in a situation where Pavokin was, you know, against AJ in a vacant title, would you apply the brakes if that was something that would happen? Again, I, again it's, it's, you know, it's not really for me to decide. It's, it's the coaches and the team. I think. You know, Dylan White just won the WBC International Silver Strap. He'll move into the top 15. Povetkin's got the silver belt. Um, and once that fight gets made with Wilder or not, that will become vacant. But every governing body is looking at AJ. I mean, they're all, if you look, WBO now, I think he's number three. WBA is number 12. W, uh, IBF is number 14 or 13. He'll move into the top 10 in those other governing bodies this week after that fight. And I just think they're all absolutely desperate to get Anthony Joshua to fight for the belt. So he's not going to have a problem. Whenever we want to fight for the title, it, it'll happen because they're, they're desperate for Anthony Joshua to fight for their belt. And is he, is he sort of progressing exactly as you expected? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, I think there's a few comments this week about 12 to 15, 16 months before he's ready to start looking at a world title shot. And if you look at the progress tonight, Dylan White in December, I'd like him to fight Tepper for the European title in March or something like that. And then probably one more, and then end the next summer. I think it'll be it'll be there or thereabouts. And you know, going back to Rehab's comment, we'd love him to do more rounds. You know that you probably can't find a heavyweight. I mean, uh, Kevin Johnson was like the perfect guy. Do you know what I mean? Finally, this is the guy. We've got the guy to fight him. We'll definitely give him some rounds. It's lucky to get through the first round. So I just don't think. I mean, Marius Wax, a guy who's got some yeah, yeah. serious, you know, but I don't think he would go a couple of rounds either. Yeah. I mean. But it's perfection, what you're seeing, and um, it's great to watch. Do you know what you said about Kelbrook in the week, about he would beat any welterweight in the world? Mm. Do you believe that Anthony Joshua would beat any heavyweight in the world? Yeah, I do, yeah. Including Klitschko? Yeah. And he said any, yeah, he said any. Well, I'm just fucking I'm just <laughs> yeah. yeah. David Hay, yeah. You, yeah. he beats all yeah. these for you. I don't necessarily, I mean, from a management perspective, they're not, it's not the right time for those fights now. But yeah, I do. I don't think there's, I mean, outside of Klitschko, I don't think there's anyone in this room who thinks Deontay Wilder will beat Anthony Joshua. I mean, it might be one, someone, you know, sorry. Fine, but That's a good thing about boxing, get yeah. a date set and you get to prove, it, yeah. prove yourself. Those fights will happen 100%, yeah. I mean. David Hope? Of course, of course. I mean, David's got, you know, he talks about fighting again, but he's going to want the right payday to, to come back in, the, in a 10-rounder, which I'm not sure is there for him. But Anthony Joshua against David Hay is... Monster fight next year. You but, spoke to David at all? Uh, I think I had a couple of conversations with some of his people, not about this fight, but mm. about about coming back. And um, he's not David Hayes. Is, 
a sharp guy, you know. He knows about the size of the fight against him and Joshua. But we're not really looking at David Hay. We're kind of looking at progressing to a world title shot. So that's a fight that has some novelty value at the moment. And it's, I think it's one of the toughest fights for Anthony. I think David Hay is a great fighter. But we're looking at winning world titles and, and it doesn't, getting through David Hay doesn't really apply to that strategy. Will you go out to Germany, Anthony, to see the I don't think so because of training. But I'll definitely be tuned in, for sure. I'm chilling at home, definitely. You got a favourite? Yeah, I'll go to Klitschko because of um, how long he's been at that level. That's what they're saying, like with Dylan, and being at a certain level uh, experience, you can't buy it, and he's got loads and loads of it. So I think he'll be all right. Anyway, totally. You know him as well from Sparring, same defence they go. Yeah, you've got to remember Klitschko's like, he's Olympic champ, isn't he? He's Olympic champ, he's had that pedigree, and then um, he. Uh, He's been in the game, he took a few losses, he's got himself together and he, he's been reigning for ever since. So I think um, he's so talented, he's done well and I think he'll keep uh, holding to them both. What do you think of Urban Tepper and how is he comparing this to Urban Tepper? Yeah. No different, no different. That's another opponent. Um, Have you watched much of yeah? him? Just a fight with Price. Um, yeah, like he's, he's, a, he's a, that European style, you've got the boxing, you know, you've got the ones you tuck up and walk forward and try and eat your shots. And um, it's adapting. Uh, with someone like that, you don't want to box with your chin in the air moving back because they're just swing over the top. Just defend and counter. Do that enough times, sooner or later, he stop coming forward and then you, you put him back. So I think that's what I'm saying. By the time Merkin Tepper comes, I think I'll be in a good place. Uh, boxing, in my mind, how to deal with someone like that. So I'm sure it won't be too awkward to to defeat him. And would you be quite keen to box for the European title uh, straight after British? Boom, boom, British, European. That that would be that would be really good. And then and then you go into world and that we've we've accomplished what we set out to do then. But whatever happens, whatever my team say, my job, be fit, be healthy, live the life, good promotion, make sure I'm ready, get me on great cards, coaches and that, make sure I've got the right fights and build me to world titles. So everyone's working together. <laughs> 13,000? Yeah, probably. Yeah. You fishing for lines, or? <laughs> you're okay, I'll say it. AJ outsold me. <laughs> I know what you're after. Um, but to be honest with you, I mean, I didn't expect that number for this fight. I thought if we could, you know, the lower bowl holds eight or 9,000, full. And I, was, I would have been over the moon with the lower bowl. We opened half the upper bowl. And I think that goes to show, and you know, although there was a lot of competitive fights on the card, there was no other big names on the undercard other than Dylan now. But you know, there wasn't, there was a lot of ticket sellers, but there wasn't any huge names on the card. So they've all come for Anthony, and I think it's a different kind of audience to a traditional boxing audience. You know, they, they wasn't, you know, they were watching the Hibbert fight, and, and they, I think they were sort of, oh, these guys, you know. And then he came out, and the whole place, I mean, you wouldn't have seen him, but when they played Neil Diamond before you come out, the whole place went potty. Yeah. And, you know, they, they, I mean, you probably don't even know, fucking know Neil Diamond is. You know, you know, sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline. No. It's definitely not on his iPad. But, uh, you know, I think once these fight, I mean, the Dylan White fight is going to be huge, and it's very exciting to be part of the journey because people are, it's catching fire, you know, I mean, We'll find out the ratings, but I'm sure off the back of Man United against Liverpool, it did huge numbers tonight, and Sky are over at the moment, you know. And um, it's very, very exciting. He, he, all he's got to do is just keep doing what he's doing. Just work and train as hard as he can and keep winning. It, it's the most simple path that I've ever seen. But nothing can stop him, nothing other than getting beat or himself. And it, that won't happen, because he's, he's, he works too hard for it, you know. He's, you see him up at the Premier League, you know, he put something on social media where he was doing press-ups in his room, mm -hmm. and his room looked like a prison. He's got two beds <laughs> in there, the, the, si the size of these, right, he's sharing with his mate. And the response, the re the response on Twitter was, is that your hotel room? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, lives, yeah, yeah. Lives, lives with his mum, you know, could easily go out and he could be, he could be a complete arsehole if he wanted to. But that's why he's going to be a great, because honestly, his feet are so firmly on the ground, works so hard in the gym, and he's, his attention to detail on everything, his boxing, you know, his, his strength and conditioning, his flexibility, he's, a, he's the absolute perfect athlete.
try and try and hard. You know what I mean? We'll all be, all be. Obviously, you're delighted to win the Commonwealth title, yeah. you know, start that magnitude. But how satisfying would it be for you to Dillian White for many years on social media has been fighting you to knock him out? How satisfying would that be in your professional career today? And that, and that, then I got beat. It's when I get that world title. Let me yeah. win a world title. You know, my ambition is a bit higher than Dylan White. So, but I've got to focus on that fight. But trust me, I'm, I'm gonna deal with that boy. So, and then I can move on to what I'm trying to do. But it will feel very sweet. Right? It doesn't seem it. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't seem it. It doesn't seem it. So, but it's good. He's got his eye on the prize. That's a dangerous fighter. Someone who wants to beat me. So that's a very dangerous fighter. And I'm not looking above that. But I definitely would like to go on and, and achieve more than beating Dylan White. So I've got to really focus on that and get him out of the way, then I can continue down the yellow brick road. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. So, yeah, it's my rematch now. It's the first guy and the first British fighter. And um, the first one, as you said, he's trying to press all my buttons and being very verbal. You know, probably see different side to me, so make sure you stay tuned because it's coming. This was the plan. He wins, I win, and we're ready for December 12th now. You have to track down that Romanian. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But he's, I think he's still amateur now. So, but if he turns pro, no problem. Have you got his number? Have you got a date for this press here? No, not yet. No. You're trying to get a new sponsor in place in time. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, you can't forget where you come from. Um, uh, you know, we, Eddie, Eddie was the one who fought for the idea. So, big shout out to Eddie for that. You know what I mean? Because he knows what type of person I am. Because I'm in the gym a lot. Sometimes I get uh, my mind's not on certain things except for training and recovering. And he brought the idea up, and I thought, brilliant. They are over the moon. They got to come out. It was only the other day, six years ago, seven years ago, that I walked in the gym and, um, and they started training me up to Olympic level. The Olympic team took me to professional, so I really keep these people close. And that's why they're still with me now on the journey. And uh, you'll see a lot more of them because they're, they're, they're like family to me. Are you, sort of, are you aware of the crowd? Obviously, like, did you hear the chance in England and that kind of stuff during the fight? Do you know what it is? It's like, uh, I don't know. This is a, and for me, I like, what's it, Kevin Peterson come in the back and was yeah. talking. And then I think like Mayweather's fighting tonight. You've got some, probably some Romanian that's just fought somewhere. You know, someone who just had a fight and just won or got beat. And I'm just going, I'm just, in, in O2, I'm just doing my little part. So I don't really let that get to me. You know, I'm just doing my business, going about my business. So it's pretty chilled. There's no turning back once you're there, is it? You just got to get on with it and embrace the crowd and enjoy it. I learned that from the Olympics. To embrace the crowd, not shy away from it. That was a good experience. Do you think the crowd got to Gary Cornish? Do you think he probably got a bit of that? I couldn't, I couldn't say. But yeah, it's, it's, it, is a, you know, it is a serious atmosphere to deal with. You know, I, don't, I don't think, I think he started well. He come up, he come you know, up, like, honestly, after 20, 20 30 seconds, I was thinking, it's going to be interesting. And then he tried it again, and he just got bumped, and that was it. He was all, he lived though, didn't he? he come out. Yeah. He threw, I think, a double jab, he threw a left hook, he caught you with a left hook, and yeah. then he tried it again. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, he's a big guy. So, great. And, and respect to Gary. He didn't have to take that fight, you know what I mean? Good I mean, respect, yeah. 21 now, he could have had three or four more, build it up into an even bigger fight, but he wanted to take the test, and same with him. That's it. That's my first under no, second undefeated fighter. Your first one was your debut. Yeah. If you look at most of his fighters, most have retired after they're 40. <laughs> True. Emmanuel Elia, who was 8 and 0, right? He was like a prospect in Italy. He got knocked out in the first round. He never fought again. Mm. Yeah. The bloke he knocked out in Glasgow, the Argentinian, Ar Arias, no, uh, not Arias, uh, the guy who went 10 rounds with Chisora. Hector Avia. Hector Avia went 10 rounds with Chisora. Went about one and a half with Joshua. He retired after. There's a few more as well. Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson. He retired after. <laughs> There's another one as well. But if, that's all I've got to stay on. Skelton. Yeah. yeah, he retired. Thank you. He retired. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. well, we brought him out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right.
Masterclass. Thank you very much as always. Thank you. Cheers.